everybody, welcome back to the Atari series. Last video we took this Atari 800 apart. I then off camera, I, well we tested it, I took it apart. Off camera I cleaned the motherboard, I scrubbed the case down really good. I cleaned the motherboard with compressed air and then a brush and then used some um, electronic cleaner right here on different parts to make sure there's no corrosion anywhere. The case I scrubbed with hot soapy water and in places where there was scuff marks on the case that I couldn't get it off, I used a very, somewhere, <laughs> right here, a very soft wire bristle brush, very gently to get all the stuff out of it. The keys are all cleaned, everything's nice and clean, it's been assembled, I tested it. The only issue this has now is that the keys themselves do not want to stay on, they like to pop off. I'm going to show you right here. See how they just fall right off. The reason for that is, and I'm going to switch to the handheld camera to give you a close-up. The reason for that is, as time has gone by, the plastic in this has aged and cracked. So now it doesn't grab it tightly. So there is a way of fixing this. That way is to 3D print little squares that would then go on the post. And then they hold it in place. You have to glue them in place. But that's kind of destructive. That changes the system by doing it. I came up with another way of doing it. And I've tested a couple different times here. The shift key is my last test on it. Is what you do is you take this right here. This is just a regular glue stick that you would use for paper or fabric. It dries in about an hour or so. It's non-destructive. It's water soluble. If you need to get it off, you can. What you do is just put a little blob about eh, not not too much that's too much of a blob way too much of a blob about that much right there about that much right there Good on this camera too not that much and then what happens when you push that in it will stick it to the inside of the post when it dries but it's not there's not enough there and it's not liquid so it's not going to go down into the actual post and touch the contacts it's only going to hold this, so I, I glued some of these so they're kind of hard to get off. But on some of them I didn't put enough of it on it. So just like that. Just put a little bit of glue on there like that. Push it in there. Let it dry for about an hour. Then you're good to go. And I'll do these other ones off camera. I'm not going to go through each one of these and do them. I mean I'm just, I'll, I'll do one more here. See some of these are I glued earlier and they're staying in place so. I don't have to redo them again, so maybe, I, maybe I'm good. And now if I need to get them off, I can. This glue is not permanent. Like, for instance, like this 5 right here. It's gluing on there, but if I pull on it hard enough, it comes right off. It's still there. So, it's not a permanent change to the system. It's just a little bit of glue. Not too much. That's way too much. And try not to get any of the glue on the inside of the post. You're on it on the outside of the post. So that's too much to start with. Let's try a little bit more. A little bit less. Like that, see? It's just, it's just just a little bit on the outside of the post. Like so. That way it just it just binds it and holds it in place. But it's not it's not locking it forever. You can take it off, you can clean it off, so it's not permanently changing anything. If you want to eventually change take the heat caps off and replace the switch you can. So that's how you would fix that. That's how I would fix that. The real, the best fix for it is to remove the key switches completely and replace them with brand new ones, but we're not going to do that. Now, what my plans are for this 800 system is that I'm going to take this. I have a desk set up in the other room, and this is going to go on the desk along with a period correct um, TV screen. And then the 1010 disk drive, which I'm going to take apart right now for the next section. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up all the different Atari things there, and we're going to go through, we're going to test different diskettes, and we're going to copy it, or see what's on each disk. And I just want to make sure every single thing works and have a nice little setup. In the end, I want to have this thing plugged into the 810 disk drive because that's the matching piece. But for now, we're going to use the 1010 and work our way towards the 810. I know the 1010 works, so it's just a matter of cleaning that one. The 810, I have no clue if it works, but it needs a lot of cleaning. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, put this back on the desk, I'm going to take the 1010 drive. I keep saying 1010, I think it's a 1050, I could be wrong. But we're going to take the disk drive and we're going to take it apart. So yes, it is a 1050 disk drive. I don't know why I'm saying 1010. 
What is a 1010? The program recorder for the um no that was a was that that was a 2010. I don't know. I know there's a part out there that's called a 1010. So this is the one that we do know works, but it's a mess. So I'm going to take it apart. It's missing some screws. What's well, missing all the screws? Ooh. All right. So I don't have to unscrew anything, but I do have to get the screws. As you can see, this one is very dirty. Needs a lot of cleaning. You can clean the head off really good. Nothing is bolted in here. What the? Wow. Is this? Absolutely nothing bolted in. Somebody took this thing apart, then decided they didn't have to save the screws. So I got to take my bucket of screws and find some new screws to put on it. That is, ugh, but it happens. So anyways, let's just take it apart here. Before I go too far, take, take the camera, take the camera. Come on. Yes, take the camera and take a picture of how these things are in here. take a picture of it so I know how to put it back if I get confused I do have the other one to look at as a cross-reference also so everything in here looks good like I said I do know this one works I have tested this one and run it so I do know it works I'm gonna give it a good cleaning set that over here normally there's screws that you take off to get these things out but we don't get to have fun like that. And there's little clips holding this one in place. And then this comes up here. This has these little, I guess they're shock absorbers right there. Oh, we have a little piece of plastic that's broken off. Where did that thing go on? See that? Right here, it's broken off there. I can hit that with a little bit of crazy glue when I get done. Put it to the side. We'll glue that back in place. Then we have the board here. I don't think I'm going to have to. Wor I'm going to worry about trying to take the RF shield off. So I'm just going to blow it out really good. So this is the controller board. So I'm going to start cleaning things up now. I am. Um, I don't know if I can film it. Let me give it a shot. I'll try to film it. If it doesn't work, then I'll just cut it out. If, if it doesn't work, I'll jump through. So let me get things out of the way here. So that's been cleaned out. And what I'll do while I got it open here, I'll take a cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol. Like this right here. And I would just clean the read right head. I do have a disc cleaner that I'll use when I'm using with the other diskettes. But I'll just clean this right now, just make sure there's no real build up on there and it really isn't so that right there is clean we're still going to take the I'm going to clean the plastic off here when I do the other parts but now I'm going to pause this and we're going to I'm going to wash the things in the sink cleaning this here I did a little bit of soaping over into the in the utility sink but now I'm going to clean it in here I'm not using anything but special it's dish soap some um, Windex, scrub brush here, got me, a dirt, got me a towel here to wipe with, 
and like I said I have dish if necessary I also have my scrub pad some people like to use things like magic eraser and stuff like that I've tried them it didn't work too well now I do see and I was wondering why this is here now I realize they had taped the case together because they didn't have the screws so I will have to get rid of all that tape residue too but first I want to get rid of the dirt you see, the dirt just comes right off easily with just a scrubber. Okay, now the front bezel here. I'm just going to give this a good scrubbing. Now when you're all done cleaning these, one of the easiest and best ways to dry them is to just take and put them in front of a fan. Just let the fan run. The fan will dry them. It won't leave any water spots behind. You don't have to go at it with a towel trying to get it all off. Then you get lint all everything and then you got the lint off of it. You don't have to. All right, now to clean the base. So let's clean up our little mess here. I'm going to try working on the tape residue now. I'll try this first. This is only, it doesn't always work. Let's just give it a shot and see if this will get rid of it. If not, then I'll work my way up. No, it's not touching it. Okay. Take a little rubbing alcohol. Try to spray that on, see if that helps it. Not really. Okay. I'll give it one more shot here before I try something different. What will take it off is some lighter fluid. It's also known as naphtha. See, this is getting some of it off. Naphtha will take it off too. I don't think I have any naphtha left. No, I don't. So, let's give this another shot here. I'll actually let it sit there now for a few seconds. And if that doesn't work, then I will go get the brake cleaner. I have used brake cleaner on these things before, on these kinds of cases. And it will remove everything. Except the case, obviously. That's getting some of it out. I might be able to just do it with the alcohol then. Okay, you could probably hear the fan running in the background. That's drying the top and the front bezel. So now we'll work on this here. Yeah, it's a shame that that is falling apart, but really nothing I can do about it. Might as well just remove it. I know the purists out there are like, oh no, don't remove it. Uh, this is mine. It's not going anywhere, so.
Okay, while those are drying, I'll wash off the, or clean off the front of the disk drive itself here. Okay, this right here is sewing machine oil. And what are we going to do with that? We are going to lube the rails here. Now, I'm not going to just squirt it on there because I don't want to get oil everywhere. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put oil on a Q-tip. If I squeeze it here, it comes out the other end. See, oil on the Q-tip. Then I'm just going to put it on the rail right here. Rail right there. Push this back. Put it up here. Put it on the inside of the rails here. Just helps make sure it's not sticking. This seems to be doing okay here. It doesn't seem to have any problems. The bearings are good, so I'm not going to worry about putting oil on the bearings, but I could put a drop of the of this in there and also in there. But they seem to be moving okay. This is how I, I repair Atom disk drives too. They do the same thing. They get sticky from sitting for so long. All right, so everything is dried now, and I also took time to put some crazy glue and fix that peg that was coming off. So now we're going to start reassembling this. And I'm going to start, I'm going to look for the screws to reassemble it with. It looks like the only screws I'm really concerned about is the case screws. And you know, while I'm at it, I might as well just use these screws for the here and then search for them afterwards instead of search for my camera. So let's do that. Where is my pen? Actually, I can use the automatic screwdriver on that one. Alright, that one, ew, oh, damn, look at the smoke, excuse my language, dang, look at the smoke in this one. Ew, but it is, it is reversed. Okay, so J11 goes one way, and J12 the same way. I'm going to take off my glasses so I can see a little better. Sorry about you seeing my bald head. And then J13 goes in, but it's flipped around, so the numbers are facing the other direction. Everything's hooked together. Yeah, let me get this camera. I'll give you. A, I'll show you what I mean by how one of them is reversed. So yeah, if you look, you see how one of them is reversed. But that is the way it's set up in here too. Look how dirty this thing is. You're gonna be a mess to clean. So that's how that goes back together. This gets sat down on top of. Oh, it's got some stuff on the side. That's interesting. Let's just look at what it has on the side here. I guess these are all the different um, quality assurance and testing and stuff at Tandon. Interesting. Make sure the little rubber bars are there to hold it down. Flip you over. And I'll 
put that on there. So let's just put these four in. Okay, now this right here, let's be able to put this in like this. I think it was the ColecoVision disk drives that I forgot to put the bezels on. They had to take them apart and put them back together. Because these go on easily, like so. Then just two more screws here. And what I'll do now is I'm going to shut things down and I'm going to go set the Atari up on this desk and we'll go back there and see how it works. Alright, so we're all set up now at our table where the Atari's going to live. The 1050's plugged in, it's hooked up to the monitor here. Or it's actually a TV, but this TV is nice in that it's a CA TV and it has video out on the back. It converts from RF to video out, so I got it running over the side into the next cubicle where it's hooked up to my Windows machine to do video capture. So, what we're going to do is we're going to test these out. I have two different Atari boot discs to test with. I have the 810 Master Disc, which is DOS 2 or 2. Point, it's DOS 2 because this uses 2.5. Then I have the ill faded DOS Master 3, which was ill faded because the sector size were 1024 bytes, 1K sector size. Which is fine, unless you're writing a file that's 1025 bytes and it uses 2K up on the disk. Whereas this one, and it wasn't compatible with the others. Whereas DOS 2 and 2.5, I believe they had 128K, 128 byte sectors, could be 256 bytes. But in either case, let's go ahead and boot up the Atari here with the DOS 2. On. So you're going to boot them all up and drop into basic. Then from there we're just going to DOS. We'll just take a quick look at it. What we're doing right now is we just want to verify that everything works here. Uh, let me grab a blank disc while I'm at it. Grab the blank disc over here. Go to DOS. I'm going to go ahead and format and initialize this disc here. So we can verify that it does read and write fine, and we know it reads, obviously. So I want to format this, I'm going to I, first try to format one, take that out, put this one in, I don't know if it's going to prompt me to switch. As I format it, I'm going to initialize it, this, hmm, it looks like this might initialize it itself at the same time, so we'll see. Formatting may also may initialize if I copy. Oh, no, I got to write DOS files, each write DOS files, so I'll do that. I think what it's doing now is verifying. It's been so long since I've used disk drives, it's, it's like the sound is like the sound of my childhood. Hopefully it's doing it okay. Three passes? Maybe. We'll find out if I'm having issues. If I'm having an issue, it should say so. This ain't sounding right. Thought it'd be done by now, but then again, it's been so long. Let's just keep waiting and see. I think I'd get an error by now if I was having a problem. This is unusual. Is my drive dirty? I would get an error, I would think, at this time. Okay, that's not right. It's just taking too long. What is going on here? Let's see here. Let's go back. We read fine.
okay. There's nothing on that. Let's try. This is the single si uh, single density. Let's just let's try to use a different disc. I do have the right style disc here, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm done. It's been a long, long time since I've done this. So let's go ahead and boot it up. I'm gonna load DOS three and try that. I could just drop in the basic too. Um, so I'm DOS. The yeah, DOS 3 had a better menu system too, a lot easier. So you have an init disk. I could do a duplicate. What's your duplicate? I'll just duplicate that disk onto this one and see if it works. Source drive number one, destination drive number one. Source disk. Now we're going to be doing some disk swapping as it copies pieces over. Let's just see how this works. All right, so it's got to format it first. Are you working? It's probably formatting it. I don't hear the heads moving. Huh. All right. Let's just. Start over. If this drive has issues, I do have the other drives. I'm just going to do a new format here. I want to make sure it writes. That's my issue. Is I want to make sure that it writes to disk. I know it reads, obviously, but does it write? Uh, initialize disk. Single density or double density? Double density. Yes. Modify FMS para parameters. No. Insert disk into drive one. And press. This might actually give me some feedback if it's not working. There's always possibility that the disc is bad. There are brand new discs, but they've been sitting in this box now for about four years. It's possible that the disc is bad. If so, I'll just have the other But I would think I would get an error somewhere along the way. Instead of it just running back and forth. Okay, device time. I didn't like that one. All right, so there may be something wrong with this disc. Let's try a different disc then. Yeah, I got a box full of brand new diskettes here. Still, yeah, I got one of these. Notchers. If you've never seen them, they're used to notch your disc so that you can use the other side of the disc too. Oh, it won't do it now because it had an error, so I gotta clear it out. Turn it back on. I gotta go back in my storeroom and dig out my compact. Cause that's where my disc cleaner is sitting inside that compact. That's gonna be fun because I just got done clearing off the storeroom to get out my video capture equipment that has been in a box since the last move. So let's initialize the disc. Try this again. If 
I get an error again that I think I may have a problem with the right head is not writing, it's just reading. That sucks. But I do have the other. So if need be, I can always swap parts if it's necessary. Or help figure out what I did wrong with it, if anything's not hooked up correctly. This doesn't sound better. We got further to the end. Alright, maybe it was the disc was bad. Alright, it must have been that disc was bad. So, let's just get rid of it. Because, yeah, it made a different sound. Yeah, it made a different sound when it got there. It's like a seat better. Okay, so let's go back to, um, how do I get back to basic? To cartridge, all right. Now I'm gonna take out my master disc out of here. I'm gonna put my blank in here. And I'm gonna write a little program. Hey, stop sticking. So we're going to save. If I remember correctly, it's D1. That should be where I would save it. It's making the right noises. Okay. Now, can I boot off of this one that I just formatted? Let's find out. Looks like I can. Alright, so load. Voila, she worked. Alright, so we do know we have a good working system here. Now we're going to go through over the ne in the next video, we're going to do the 810 disk drive. Get that one cleaned up, see what that happy mod is like. Get that set up in here too, and then we'll do the 1010, and then I want to do the Indus drive too, the Indus GT. Once I get the Indus GT going, then we're going to go through all of those diskettes. And we're going to look at each one. We're going to do some imaging. I'm going to plug this into the Windows machine and either use Respect or Aspect. Those are the two different softwares to copy the things over. And we're going to have a good time with it. So thanks for watching this one. Um, it's not as technical as some may be, but it does give you an idea that you can do this stuff yourself. And in my case, it just makes me feel good about playing with systems that I had. 30 some years ago. Have a good day.